Hey guys, what's up? Nature from Protoculture and Shadow Chronicles. Welcome back to Sonic Academy for another how to use video. Today we've got the brand new stutter edit. It's the collaboration between BT and Isotope. This is version two. Let's dive in, check out all the new features. Okay, here we have it, Stutter Edit 2, brand new look for the plugin and a whole ton of new features, uh, huge upgrade from the old version. Uh, let's take a look first, uh, if you're not uh, familiar with Stutter Edit, I want to kind of just show you the sort of um, way that it's designed to work. Uh, by default, the play mode is going to be set to MIDI. If you come and click on the MIDI uh, channel or the MIDI play mode button here, uh, it's actually aware of which DAW you're in and it'll give you uh, instructions on the DAW that you based in on how to set up the uh, MIDI channels for this. And basically you're going to need an extra MIDI track to trigger the effects. I've got my MIDI track over here. Uh, in Cubase you're just going to select the output as the stutter edit. Uh, input and you want to just enable the monitor button over there so that you can actually trigger without having to be on that channel we can come back and edit the stutter edit plugin from here now and still have the MIDI triggering with the monitor on cool so uh, let's just quickly take a look at the preset management as well if you click here you're going to see you have all these um, these keys down the right hand side here uh, this is basically where you're going to load the individual patches in um, on this side, you've got your browser. If you double click this, you'll have various different um, categories here. We'll go to the BT signature banks first. Now, before we load in a bank, if you double click on one of these um, sort of capitalized uh, sections here, you can actually load the entire bank in. You can clear the bank over there. And if you open this up, you can actually drag in individual uh, presets now onto keys. So you can kind of build a custom kit the way that you want it and you can include different presets from different banks on your keyboard like that so you don't need to load up the entire bank if you don't want to you can kind of just make up your own bank as well obviously there's a user area as well you can save out whole banks or individual presets as well um, let's just jump back to that uh, best of bank and take a listen to what this actually sounds like i've got a little breakbeat track that I was uh, that I put together a few loops for yeah and that is running into a group with stutter edit on the group just so we can kind of get everything into stutter edit uh, this works well on individual stuff as well but in this case I'm just kind of running a whole mix into into the plugin uh, let's take a listen so we've got our triggers set up and let's play it back and hear what this does <laughs> Cool, there you have it. That's that signature BT uh, stutter edit sound. Um, I think it's great. Uh, I don't use that kind of sound as much um, as some people might. I think it's kind of genre specific. Um, but that said, this is one of the things I like about this new version. There's a lot more scope to kind of use it slightly more subtly as well. And we're going to kind of get into some of that now. Um, but let's take a look at some of the controls. So the first major major cool thing about this is every single parameter that you see here can be edited with this new envelope generator or this envelope system that you have here and i mean pretty much everything from this point down uh, every parameter has an envelope that can be attached to it um, so let's quickly i'm going to just clear this bank and we'll start fresh we'll just grab c2 so whichever key you choose here we're going to be editing now so there's one other thing that i just wanted to talk about in this play mode before we move down um, you now also have an auto mode so you don't actually need to set up the trigger you can just use this as a standalone effect uh, once you have auto enabled when you press start on your daw it'll trigger whichever uh, key you currently have selected in the preset manager there 
Um, but I've actually got a trigger here, so I'm just going to bring C2 across so that re triggers the beginning of our loop. There we go, and just make that active. And we've got some stuttering going on there. Cool. So let's uh, let's take a look uh, just before we get into the stutter section. I just want to just grab the filter down at the bottom, just because it's kind of simple. I just want to show you how these new uh, handles for the parameters work. There's kind of three different modes that you have. You've got locked parameters, like you see here in the dry wet. Uh, you can see that's locked. You can unlock that and lock that again. So the lock parameter is going to be a single parameter that you can move up and down. And you'll see in the envelopes, it's basically represented by a straight line. Now, you've also got these parameters, which are basically made up of two points. You have the start point, which is the little arrow, and you have the end point, which is this one that the little arrow fits into. Uh, this can be dragged past and to reverse, and it's it's kind of like setting up a gradient, essentially. You've got a, the start and the end, and you create that gradient between the two of them. Um, you can actually adjust the curves for these, but it's still essentially a start and an end. Now, uh, you can also start double clicking and dragging and dropping extra points in here. You'll see then this changes to this little icon, which indicates that it's a complex curve. Uh, you can put in curves uh, and you can snap using control, for example, just holding shift will let you into fine adjustments on those. And then if you click on this uh, maximize button, you'll actually get a full screen uh, with a whole bunch more control that you can do for these. Uh, that I should mention as well, you can actually have individual speeds set up for each envelope as well. So you can kind of get almost sort of polyrhythmic effects um, by having these running at different speeds. Um, we've got some master speed controls up at the top here. This is going to be the length at which any effect runs at release time or release mode. That will release on a grid. So like if you let go of the key, it will always quantize the time that it releases to eighth notes or to quarter, whatever you set up. You have a couple of other options like instant, which will obviously let go instantly or full gesture, which will finish the whole bar that this is currently selected there. Um, Palindrome, this basically is the loop mode for the envelopes, so all envelopes will follow this. Um, if it's set to palindrome, it will run from the beginning till the end, and then it will loop back in reverse. So it'll basically play forward and then reverse it. Uh, turning palindrome off will basically reset the loop every time it gets to the end of its envelope. Freeze, we're going to check out now. So freeze is basically going to freeze the buffer. You'll see when you have the stutter effect running. Uh, even though it's stuttering, it's constantly updating the audio in the background that's coming in. Uh, the buffer, you can basically freeze a section of that, that buffer and have it just repeat over and over according to the duration. Let's take a listen there. So that's the buffer freeze. And uh, let's get into the stutter section now because this is kind of the signature uh, sound from this plugin and a lot of it comes from the stutter edit section. Um, this gets kind of interesting here yeah, with these new envelopes. There's a lot you can kind of do with this movement. Um, let's uh, jump into this first. We're going to just play around with the rate for the stutter that we have here. I just want to show you the quantize functions because it's quite clever how this works. Uh, you can basically decide what you want in this uh, left section of here. So we're going to reset our curves quickly. And you'll notice it's going to, uh, you can have free value set on, which will give you a smooth adjustment of that. Uh, free value off, it's always going to lock to a specific um, time signature or key that you enable. So yeah, you can choose which ones you want. Uh, you can disable certain... Um, uh, time signatures if you'd like and then also because eventually with the stuttering you get to a point where it's fast enough that it actually goes into audio rates so what this will let you do is it'll actually let you sync uh, two specific note values as well so we can say we'll just keep that low A1 there that's going to be when it's 
at such a high rate that it's actually playing an A. That's uh, the track that we're working in. So let's um, let's add a few extra points now. Uh, we've got over here. We've got eighths. I believe there's our eighths up here. And yeah, there we go. There's our eighths. And if we play that back, it's just going to be stuttering eights. So let's do some, we'll add an extra point there. If we hold down control again, you can snap to these uh, vertical lines. And let's grab sixteenths for that one. We'll do two sixteenths and we'll go to 30 seconds. And then this whole top section, why don't we just have that stutter fast enough that we get an A. And take a listen to that now. Cool, that's pretty interesting. Um, and I mean, you can have longer two bar sections, you can really go to town with this kind of get some really interesting rhythms. Um, I really kind of like using this in a slightly more simple way as well. You do also have a bunch of presets I should just mention just before I go out of this. Um, I'm gonna just reset this. And I love kind of playing around with this in locked mode as well without all the fancy uh, envelopes going on. For example, if we just grab, let's say, 16th uh, section, and I've locked that parameter now, so we've just got that straight line. Uh, for instance, adjusting the length of the uh, preset that we have, let's take a dotted note, for example, and we're going to kind of get really nice syncopated rhythms from that. Let's just play this break beat through that and take a listen to what you get. Take the quarters dotted. Really, really cool. It's nice for generating some uh, cool little rhythms and stuff. I'll actually bounce those out and then kind of uh, rearrange those in audio after as, afterwards as well. Really cool for those kind of buffer effects. And um, like I said, yeah, it's it's a lot easier to kind of use this one uh, in more sort of subtle manners this time. Um, let's just also check out the last few of these parameters. Yeah, you've got some control over the actual buffers themselves. The left and right you can do independently. Uh, this gate section here is quite nice. Uh, we'll lock all these parameters just because it's easy to kind of demo them. You've got a tail for your gate. It's kind of getting longer and longer that gate as it goes. Uh, we've got panning controls. This is kind of going to give you like an auto pan kind of vibe for the buffer section as well. Take a listen to this. It's also going to kind of increase as it goes up. Very cool effect that as well. Um, the buffer, like I said, you can actually adjust these individually. You can unlink them and kind of play around with the sizes of the buffers, for example, the positioning of them. Obviously the grid sizes. And then uh, you have some control over the jitter as well, which will introduce some irregularities into that. And take a listen to this. Let's actually just readjust these back to quarters again. So 
So that's just playing around with the jitter. And again, you can uh, apply these to left and right individually as well. Some really cool stuff. Uh, I mean, you can play around with this for hours, uh, just making all sorts of beautiful little glitchy sounds. Um, but I'm not going to spend too much more time on this. Uh, we'll take a look briefly at the other effects as well. Um, you've got a whole ton of stuff here. Uh, and they can all be reordered with these little uh, handles on the right-hand side here. And then also just enabled, uh, turning them on like that. And once again, like I said, everything uh, in everything is um, automatable via these envelopes again. Uh, so we've got distortion, uh, the lo-fi. This is I really like the lo-fi in this a lot. Um, chorus, the comb filtering with this kind of motion again, also really really cool to be able to get movement and stuff with the comb filters. Uh, even the reverb, the size uh, of the reverb, if you automate that, um, it's essentially automating the buffer size and gives you all sorts of cool, really um, weird pitchy effects from doing that. Uh, flanger phaser we've got, we've got a low pass filter. Uh, I should also mention that aside from the low pass and high pass filter that you have in here, you also have a master filter right at the top, um, which will go from low pass to high pass as well. The tape stop effect also really cool. You can set the slow down here. Very, very cool. And the high pass filter and lastly a delay right at the end. You can take a look at the parameters there for that. You've got individual controls for the right and left, feedback, etc filters on each of those as well. Now the last thing I wanted to mention was this section at the end here. This is new to version 2 as well. You have a dedicated output section with a limiter built in now as well and even the limiter can be controlled by these um, the threshold at least by the um, the envelopes. So let's just disable this quickly. I want to just show you like another usage case for some of these things. For example if we are working with a one bar section um, and we wanted to do some side chaining uh, we can open up our envelope and we just drop in some points we can draw in a curve and now remember that we at one bar so we have an individual speed adjustment for this envelope yeah we can multiply this by four so it's essentially going to give us quarter note timing there so we can still have one bar uh, automation going on with the other stuff, um, like maybe doing uh, some complex filter curves here, for example. These are going to go over the, the full bar, but we're going to have side chaining happening every quarter note as well. Let's take a listen to that. So yeah, I mean, you can see there's there's a ton of uh, of usage examples for this this plugin um, you're really getting a lot to play around with here aside from the usual uh, glitchy fills that you can do and this does them very very well as well so yeah uh, I, I was overall pretty impressed with this I really like this plugin it's one of those plugins that you can kind of get lost in for quite a while um, if you an owner of stutter edit one definitely check this out it's a huge upgrade from the original uh, if not check it out it's a super cool plugin um really really cool sounds that you get out of this and a lot of fun to play around with as well um cool yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this walkthrough for stutter edit 2 from isotope and bt i will catch you soon right here at sonic academy cheers Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.